Hi everybody, uh, I'm going to do another guitar lesson today about 7th chords. Somebody asked me about a systematic approach to working on 7th chords on guitar and it's hard not to uh, think of the great Ted Green um, when I think about 7th chords on guitar because he thoroughly, if not completely exhausted all the possibilities, de definitely uh, deeply dove into um, how to play all sorts of different harmonic things on the guitar. And he had a way of organizing the seventh chords in terms of what he called voicing groups, which is how close the chords are. So I'm gonna move through these kind of quickly. And um, he had 14 of them. I wanna talk about six of them um, because some of them are just really, you know, root fifth, then skip two strings, seventh and third. And those are, that's a really cool way to play a C major seventh chord, but we're gonna hold off on that for right now and talk about some of the more common ones. And the first one, what he calls voice in group one, is root, third, fifth, and seventh. Very, very easy. Root, third, fifth, seventh can also be played on the inner strings as well. Voice in group two is a typical drop two chord. Root, fifth, seventh, third. You can also play that root, fifth, seventh, third. And then down here, root, fifth, seventh, third. Voice in group three was root, third, seventh, fifth. I love that, skipping the B string. You can do that here, skipping the G string. Root, third, fifth, two, root, third, seventh, fifth. Voice in group four was a drop three chord, another typical jazz guitar chord where I skip the A string here. Root, seventh, third, fifth. Also possible here, root, seventh, third, fifth. Notice I finger it like that, because if I finger it like that with a drop two chord and strum it, I might, uh, I'm gonna add a fifth and double the note. So I have a tendency to finger that without a bar so that I can skip that fourth string and not worry about hitting it. Um, which one am I on? The fifth one. Um, that's gonna be root, fifth, third, seventh great sounding chord there, root, third, fifth, root, fifth, third, seventh, where in this case I'm skipping the A string, so I got one fifth here and one fifth there, nice open chord, and then finally uh, root, third, fifth, seventh, and that's, you can see that the closed position where this the root was here for C is just going down an octave. That's another great way to get different types of seventh chords. And just pick one of those notes and go up or down an octave with them. Now, how do we systematically get the most out of these chords? Um, I'd like to take, uh, encourage you to take each one of these and take them through quality transformations, which is a fancy way of saying making a major seventh, a dominant seventh, and then a minor seventh, etc. And so that we know our theory on this, there's five primary seventh chord forms, which can be major seventh, which is one, three, five, seven. Dominant seventh, one, three, five, flat seventh. Minor seventh, one, flat three, five, flat seven. Half diminished or minor seven, flat five, one, flat three, flat five, flat seven. And fully diminished, one, flat three, flat five, double flat seventh. This is a stretch, I know, for the first voicing group, um, but you can do it on any of these, right? So for the drop two or voicing group two, V2, as Ted would call it, major seventh, dominant seventh, a lot of you know this, C minor seventh, right, C half diminished, and then C fully diminished. But it starts getting interesting with some of these other forms, like for example, voice in group five, the one with the fifth, and then the fifth. Major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, and this was a new one to me a few years ago, half diminished like this, and then diminished, like that. Um, now, in addition to the big five there of major seventh, minor, dominant seventh, minor seventh, half diminished and fully diminished, um, you, there's nine additional ones. And I'm gonna go through those systematically here. Major seventh with a sharp five. I'm using voice in group two. Major seventh with a flat five. Dominant seventh with a sharp five. Dominant seventh with a flat five. What else do I have? I got my list so I can keep an order. Ma 
major six, so the sixth, seventh is being replaced with a six. People know the Rufus Wainwright tune poses. Starts with a major six arpeggio, minor six, which is a minor chord with a natural six. Okay, in addition to that, we have a dominant seventh with a sus four, a minor with a major seventh, diminished chord with a major seventh replacing the diminished seventh. So it looks like a B major triad with a C in the bass. Very useful chord there. Um, so you might have figured those out before. Um, but remember that one drop two or Ted's V2 is also playable up here. So you go through and make dominant minor, um, right? Minor seven flat five and then down here. It's all for all six of those forms. You're going to find some really, really interesting things. Let's do it for that close position, V1. Um, so major 7 sharp 5. I'd like to point out that this is a C major 7th with a raised 5th. But you don't have to use this chord just when you're seeing a C major 7th with a sharp 5. This particular structure can be used as a upper structure for other types of chords. So if you change the bass note, like let's say A, using an open A string there, that's a minor, A minor major 9 chord. If I put a D in the bass of that, it's a D Lydian 13. If I put an A flat in the bass of that, it's an altered. You can get a lot of different sounds from just that structure. It's a, it's a lot to take in, but we're talking about a systematic way of practicing it. So this, this might take you two months to get a handle on. It might take you two years, it might take you 10 years. Ted himself said, you know, it's the objective of this is not to learn everything, but to make a few friends with them. He had a little bit of a Fred Rogers vibe in the most positive way. Very gentle voice, um, very open-minded. Um, you can tell though that he definitely went through all of them. And for those of you, those of you out there who are looking for some more things with some basic materials, because there's always more in this fundamentals. That's kind of what I, like to teach is that the things that you think you know there's always a little bit more there and with these seventh chords you can see that if I go through all of those and change those qualities you're gonna make some new discoveries um, let me finish up here major seven sharp five major seven flat five dominant seven sharp five dominant seven flat five what do I have uh, six that's from uh, Moonlight in Vermont right Johnny Smith's Moonlight in Vermont starts with that chord right there. Minor six, minor major seventh. What else do we have here? Oh, uh, dominant seven sus four. This is a really cool one. Anybody played that chord before? If you know this C major seventh, all I'm doing is replacing the third with the fourth and flatting the seventh. What a cool sound. There's C in the bass. There's A flat in the bass. It on top of a bunch of different chords. Super cool sound. And then our good old friend diminished with a major seventh. Really, really great sound there. C diminished with a major seventh. It could be a D13 flat nine chord. It could be a lot of different sounds. Um, should we go through a couple other? Yeah, let's, let's go through a couple other ones. This is voicing group three. Dominant. Minor seventh, minor seven flat five, fully diminished. Okay, now let's go to the other ones. Major seventh with a sharp five. That's a lovely sound, skipping the B string. Sharp fives in the melody, flat fives in the melody. Dominant seventh, sharp five, dominant seventh, flat five. Dominant seven sus four, just bar across. Minor major seventh, what do we got? Root flat three, major seven, five. What's next? Fully diminished, it's gonna be this one. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Now I'm gonna replace the diminished seventh with the major seventh. I love that sound, it's such a cool sound. And again, it's. You can discover a cool chord like this through this system. Um, 
whether or not you work it into your playing is sort of up to you putting it into a chord melody solo or using it to comp it's really just a again another b major chord in an open inversion with a c in the bass but that was a new chord to me as of uh, let's say 10 years ago or so when i first started diving into this um, did i do six yet major six minor six they're gonna look like chords you already know like a minor six nine but the fact that you're skipping a string is kind of cool and again we're being very rigid about where the root third fifth and seventh are and then manipulating the chord qualities um let's see i can uh i can stop there and maybe do another follow-up lesson on what else i would do that do with this but in addition to taking all of these six voicing groups through those uh 14 chord qualities five plus nine i would also try to invert them which means just move the root up to the third the third up to the fifth the fifth up to the seventh and the seventh up to the root some of them are going to be impossible to play um, especially those ones that are really close together the very very first one is almost impossible but it's worth searching and, and thinking about uh, and remember you can use open strings to help get them another thing that's fun to do is diatonic chord scales. So just going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a major key, harmonic minor key, melodic minor key, harmonic major key. Um, so, you know, voicing group two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. What if I did that with this voicing group one? One, two, three, four, I'm gonna run out of space, five, six, seven. Um, what about voicing group three? I'm going to skip the B string. Two, three, four, five, six. This half diminishes a problem sometimes. And you can do it right with harmonic minor. So the first chord would be minor major seventh, half diminished. The next one's major seventh, sharp five, minor seventh, dominant seventh, major seventh, and then fully diminished. This is another tricky one. Um, you could also go up through the circle of fifths. So like if I did, there's voice in group five, one, five, three, seven. There's one, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. Let's try it in harmonic minor. I hope I get this right. One, there we go. Four, a fully diminished seventh. Oh boy, what a cool sound for that B, right? And then three, another super cool sound. Uh, where are we? It's gotta start again. <laughs> I was distracted by how cool it was. C minor major seventh, F minor seventh, B fully diminished, E flat major seventh, sharp five, A flat major seventh, D half diminished, G seven. That's really cool. I'm not quite sure I've done that that way before, and it's a great sound. Notice I'm also kind of choosing where I arpeggiate, right? Like outer strings, inner strings. You've almost got a tune there. I could also do something like uh, inner strings. Let's see. Something like that. Really, really cool sounds. So I hope this gives you some ideas. By no means have I exhausted this, and I was... Uh, tempted to go through this and take every one of those voicing groups and manipulate them through those qualities and take them through all those cycles for you, but it's, it would take about 30 minutes. What I hope is that it sparks some ideas for you about investigating seventh chords and how to systematically go through them. Um, and if you have any questions, please message me. I'd be happy to set up a, a lesson and talk to you about it in more detail, or just uh, leave me a message in the comments. Thanks so much.